Hey, howdy partners. Glad you could join me. It's Lone Ranger Mike. Not quite sure what state I'm in at the moment, but we've been continuing our journey with uh, Sheriff Josh and Ranger Amanda and British Banded Noah. We've uh, had some storms this week and a lot of rain, but the sun's out now and I'm just uh, cooking some beans for the boys and the girls. Not many beans here though, I'm afraid. Just test it here. Mmm. Perfection. Anyways, we've made it to the verge of Tumbleweed Valley. Now, Ranger, Amanda's not very good with a map, so we've, Sheriff Josh has got the map. Now we're going to uh, the New Frontier, and Lone Ranger Mike don't need no maps. But uh, let's find out from Sheriff Josh exactly where we are. All right, it's Sheriff Josh here. I still have this map. Just like Lone Ranger Mike just said, thank you for that. We're traveling and we've been going through some stormy weather, but we just came out by Tumbleweed Valley. Here is a place known for not having any food or water for miles and miles and miles. It's a valley with just some tumbleweed. And just to catch you up in case you've missed previous episodes, we started our journey by leaving Silverton as it was getting dangerous over there. Ranger Amanda, Long Ranger Mike, British Bandit Noah, and myself, Sheriff Josh, we're all heading to the New Frontier, somewhere no one has ever been before. Since we left, we've faced some fears as Mr. Fear <coughs> has been trying to mess and get in our heads. Now, Ranger Amanda was afraid of being unsafe, but was reminded that God will save us. Last week I had to face my fear of being left alone and defeated. But I was reminded by the Bible story that Jeff told. You know, the one when God split the Red Sea. I was reminded that God is fighting for us. And hey, I'm not scared of being defeated anymore. And this week, well, let's see how Long Ranger Mike is getting on. Back over to you Ranger Mike. Well, thank you, Sheriff Josh. You know, the only problem with getting to the new frontier is, you know, as I've always said, I've, I've been there to the new frontier. The only problem is there are lots of new frontiers and I'm not quite sure we're going to the new frontier that I've been to before, which I've said I've been to, but it might be another new frontier, which is a new frontier to me and a new frontier to them as well, not an old frontier that I've a new frontier that I've been to already. So just keep that onto your heads. Okay. Okay, right. <laughs> We're back. Um, the only problem is with this Tumbleweed Valley is there's no water or no food. So uh, whatever food we got left is what we've got. And uh, as you can see, there ain't not too many beans here. So I'm just hoping that um, Amanda, hey Amanda, can you just check that bag for some more beans? What? No. There are no beans. No. What? This is the only beans we got left. Hey, British Bandit Noah, can you just check your bag for more beans? Mm -hmm. You're out of beans. Mm -hmm. Sheriff Josh, can you just check your bag? Mm. What? You mean these are the last beans we've got? Ah, yes, Mr. Fear here. F E A R, you clever lot of home, spelling my name. I heard you all booing and cheering me last week. Well, I wasn't scared, not very much, maybe just a little bit. Anyway, back to business. Ranger Amanda, she overcame her fears. A Lone Ranger, uh, Mike is next on today. Well, Sheriff went last week and, well, he overcame his fears too. 
Well, don't you worry. I've known Lone Ranger Mike for many years. One, two, three, four, I think 12 in total. Anyway, enough of that. Apart from his love of transport, Mike has many other loves, which, of course, is his tummy. Yes, Mike likes his food. Oh, and I think when he leaves Silverton, he's going to be worried about not having any food in his tummy. <laughs> like you lot at home, I'm sure, with your lovely lockdown treats. Well, I've got some treats. Everyone loves M&Ms, including Mike, apart from chocolate raisins, I think. Well, let me just start. One for me. Hmm, and one for me. <clears throat> yes, I love chocolate. Mm, those don't taste too good. Mm. Who put cat food in my M&Ms box? Was it you at home? Was it you? I don't like cat treats. I can't eat them. They make me so Anyway, I've got to go now. Uh, I'm going to order a Domino's Tex-Mex special to get away from this taste. Hey guys, I'm sorry about that. You know, I think, I think Mr. Fear must have got into my head and my mind and made me worry that we didn't have any food left. You know, at times like these, there's only one place we can turn and that's to God's word and how God can help us. And one of our friends back at, uh, at the camp, Rosanna, is going to tell us a story about how God provided for his people. So thanks, over, Rosanna. Over to you. This is a story of another time God helped his people, Israel. For many years, God's family was stuck as slaves in Egypt. So God chose a guy called Moses to lead them out of slavery and into an amazing home, to a land that God had promised, a land called Canaan, where they could be free. From the moment the Israelites left Egypt, God made it clear that he was in control and that he was going to keep his family safe. He led them with a pillar of fire at night and a cloud during the day. He actually split the Red Sea into two parts so they could walk right through. But once they reached the other side to safety, there were still challenges ahead. The journey to this land God had promised was going to be hard. The Israelites didn't know whether they would find food or water or how long it would take to get to Canaan. So just six weeks into the journey, they started complaining. What are we going to eat? Now, Moses knew that God hadn't freed them from slavery and parted the Red Sea just to let them die of hunger in the desert. So he asked the Lord for help. And guess what? He did! God already had a plan. A plan no one could ever have imagined. In the morning, dew covered the ground. And when it was gone, flakes of food that looked like frost was in its place. The Israelites called it manna, which means, what is it? God told them to eat it all and not save any. But of course, some people saved a little, just to be safe. Remember, they were worried they wouldn't have what they needed. But the next morning, the old manna was full of wriggly maggots. Yuck! But the good news is, there was also lovely, fresh, new manna. See, God wanted them to trust him every single day. What is amazing though, is that on the sixth day of every week, God did tell them to gather enough for two days. That way, they had one day to rest. This is called a Sabbath. And it's a day where everyone gets to relax and have a rest. So when they woke up on the seventh day of the week, oh, the manna they had saved was as fresh and delicious as it was when they first gathered it. We don't know how it happened, but it did. However, God's people quickly forgot about how God was with them. They grew tired of the manna that they ate. They complained again, saying, if only the Lord has kept us back in Egypt. They groaned, 
Back in Egypt, we had fresh fruit and cucumbers. We sat around pots filled with delicious meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Now you have brought us into the wilderness to starve to death. They actually wished they could be slaves again. I wonder, have you ever complained about something instead of trusting God for help? Well, God was going to help them, even though they were complaining. God told Moses that he will send meat to the people every evening for a whole month. And that's exactly what he did. That evening, God blew a wind from the sea and made little birds, called quail, flock to their camp. The Israelites were overjoyed. They were amazed. They had all the quail they could need. They ate and they were satisfied. And so, the Israelites kept travelling, following the cloud and the fire, eating quail and new manna every day, and getting a Sabbath every week. God loved his family very much and it might seem pretty clear that God was with them but they still weren't so sure. At one point they even said to Moses, is the Lord with us or not? Why do you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us with thirst? The people stopped trusting Moses which really meant they had stopped trusting God, just because things got hard. But Moses knew God. He knew that God would have a plan, so he asked God for help. And Moses was right. Turns out God had another miracle in store. God said, take your staff, strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. And guess what? Yes, it did. So for 40 more years, God's family wandered in the desert and all that time, God kept on giving them food, water, rest and protection. He even kept their clothes from wearing out. God's family couldn't take care of themselves on their own. They had to trust God and he always gave them just enough, just in time, in ways that they could never have expected. God will always look after his family. He did then, and he still does now. Hey, thank you, Rosanna, for that great story about how God provided for his people in the wilderness. The manna, what is it? <laughs> and the quail. They, uh, they were there every morning for the, the people of God to just to pick up and take. God provided for them all. And so now I don't have to worry about what's going to happen. We have no food, but I'm sure God will provide for us. Mr. Fear, you need to get some new clothes made, clothes that fit. Anyways, what are we going to eat? Hey, what you got there? Something new to try. We found some new provisions. Wow, some new things to try. Now I know that uh, Ranger Amanda is going to challenge you to try some new things. Looks like I'm going to have to try some new things now. No beans, but hey, what's this? Hmm. Can you see that? We caught some fish. So we got some fish and custard. Hmm. Hey, this isn't too bad. Hey, this new food is not bad at all. Hey, we got some more fish, some more custard. Well, hey, Ra Ranger Amanda, see if you can challenge the children to do something new, eat something new this week. One minute, 37 seconds later. Mm, that was a good meal. You know when when you've had a good meal and you've been provided with so many things you'd like to praise and worship god and uh, that's what we're going to do right now we're going to head over to the campfire and uh, i'm going to try and persuade wild westlife 
to sing my favorite song. The going is high and the going is tough. Let's see if I can persuade them. Welcome back to week three of Campfire Worship. And today we've been looking at how Lone Ranger Mike has been worried about running out of food. But I know one place that there's always food and that's at a party. So let's think about the party that we're going to have in heaven and sing the song together. Oh, I love that song, Party Time, and I hope you did too, cowboys and cowgirls. Well, it's just about time for me to go and round up the horses because we need to continue on our trail to the new frontier. While I go and uh, round up the horses, especially Spike, I don't know where he's got to, here's a round up of all those creative things that you sent through from the challenge last week. You were supposed to make a 3D scene of Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea and you you did pretty well so here's the weekly roundup of that and while I go and round up the horses get back here Spark Hey y'all, it's Chef Josh here again. Amanda's still rounding up the horses, but she'll be back in a moment to tell you your challenge. But for now, I wanted to see how y'all get along with the memory verse. How much can you remember from previous weeks? The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be discouraged and do not be afraid. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. And that's all. Well done y'all. And Back over to Amanda at the campfire. Howdy everyone, we're just setting up here for a campfire. Yep, thank you for that, uh, Noah. We've just set up a campfire here on our way on to the new frontier. And uh, 
while we're having this campfire, and I'm joined here with Sheriff Josh and Moon Ranger Mike and of course Noah, um, what I thought we'd do is after all this talk about some food, I was getting a bit hungry. So what I've got here is some things that you cowboys and cowgirls might have seen before. I've got a big marshmallow here. This is the kind you need when you're heading out to the new frontier. And I've got some of these biscuits, these whatchamacallit uh, digestives, that have some chocolate on them. Now, back in Silverton, we used something a bit uh, different than this. They were called graham crackers, and uh, we would have something called uh, Hershey's chocolate, and that was the proper way to make s'mores, um, which is what we're gonna be making now. Um, but we'll have to just do with what we've got. And I'll just tell you something, boys and girls, why they call it s'mores is because they're so good that you always want some more of them. So just remember that, that's why they're called s'mores. So you can do this at home, um, if with a grown up of course, if you want to make your own s'mores uh, uh, this week. So this is part of our challenge for, for next week. You need to make something, cook something, something maybe that you have never tried before or maybe you want to make some s'mores and try and do it over a campfire if you don't have a fire of course you can cook it however way you want um, but try and try and see if you can do something over a campfire this week so that's your challenge cook something over a campfire and i want to see your pictures see how you're getting on so now we're gonna uh, make this this s'more So as you can see here, I, I made my s'more. It's a bit messy, but that's what it's supposed to be like. So uh, I made my marshmallow a little bit charred. That's how I like it. And uh, maybe you don't want it to be that charred. And you just put it in these two biscuits and you just enjoy this lovely, sweet, marshmallow, chocolatey goodness. 